All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can model a shield. It'll use a lot of the tools and techniques I've talked about previously in my beginner's guide video, so feel free to check those out. Um, but I also wanted to create an object that uh, left us the ability to make changes very quickly and very easily, and we'll see what those are. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now also in here, I wanna point out that I do have some nice lighting and materials in here. I don't know if I'll get to those in this video, but as I mentioned, uh, I wanted to give myself the ability to make a lot of changes to this. So for instance, I could come into the extrude and change the bevel. Now that may kind of screw up the way the, um, the rivets look, but that's fine. For right now, you can see that we've changed that um, bevel and probably need to adjust the shape depth a little bit. So maybe something like that. And even the rivets themselves, uh, I can change the number of them because I used a cloner to create them, okay? So I don't know why they just disappeared. I suspect it has something to do with my extrude and the shape depth again. But that is something else we can adjust here, okay? So the number of rivets, rivets the bevel, um, the amount of bend, all of this stuff is something we can very easily control and work with. And so that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna start with this spline, really just as reference here, I will go through and remake it for us using my spline pen here. What I'm gonna do is just place my points where I need them. And I'm honestly just gonna start with these three. I don't wanna close this off. I really just wanna make half of this anyway. Um, and once I've created those three points, I will select them all by hitting Control or Command A, right clicking, and then choosing Soft Interpolation. Okay, I now need to work with those handles. So I'm gonna make sure I go back to my spline pen since that's really the only way I can make sure to um, break my handles. And then from there, I will start working with them. And as I said, we're gonna need to break uh, this handle. So I'll just hold shift and now I can break it. And just really using this to match what I had previously, which I just Googled shield, found an outline I liked and just kind of eyeballed it as I created it. So now we have um, the basis of our outline. I do want one more point in the middle, okay? So maybe something like that. I can delete this point. And now what I'll do is, we can actually get rid of that old spline just in the way at this point. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this, rotate it, okay? And before I join it together, I'm also going to select both of these and then delete them, all right? That way, oops, I deleted everything. So I guess we'll leave them, but I was trying to avoid having those duplicate points there. So I'm gonna connect objects and delete. So that way I just have a single point and this is what I'm dealing with now. So honestly, I'll just delete, say one of them. This one really should be kind of centered. So I'll open up my attribute manager and see that I need to zero it out on the Z axis. And similar thing here. All right, really select one of them, zero it out, and then I can delete the other one, okay? This may look a little bit strange, but we're gonna start cleaning it up. I'm gonna hit close spline, all right? Actually, before we hit close spline, we'll join up what we can. So I'll select these two points, and then I will do a join segment, okay? I will select these two points, and I shouldn't need to join them. I can just do a close spline. Now, notice my handle, is still a little bit broken, it's a little bit off, okay? And so what I'm gonna do here is just try and use my grid to line this up as a way to try and make this symmetrical. So I can do something like that. And so while I don't think it's the exact same shape it was before, um, you can see I got pretty close. And if I wanna zoom in a little bit to you know, make this perfectly symmetrical, then I can do something like that. I don't think we need that point, but we'll just go ahead and leave it there. I don't like how those handles are different lengths, so I can right click and just do equal tangent length, and that will fix that. It allows me to keep that symmetry. With that done, we can now create our extrude. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option, and then when I create my extrude, my spline goes directly inside of it. I can then go to the cap section. I'll come back to the offset here in a second. And the bevel I'm gonna go with here, um, I'm just gonna hit load preset, and it's this first one, the basic flat uh, bevel. So we have that now. 
I can go to my object tab and adjust the offset now. I think I'm going to want something, I think it was around seven centimeters. So that looks pretty good. And honestly, the basics of our shield are done. Uh, I want to point out here with something like this shield uh, and the extrude, we want to be careful with how the rounding looks. And a lot of that comes down to the intermediate points type. Adaptive is going to only give us more lines where we need it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in this case, it does make things look a little bit strange. So I'm actually going to go with um, either natural is one of my favorites, but even that will put a lot more points in lines where um, I don't need them, like up here compared to on the sides. So I could actually just do uniform and then try and adjust this to a number that works for me. And really what I'm looking for here is to make sure I get my hard corners um, as well as the point at the bottom. So you can see that can be a little bit tricky to do that. Honestly, <laughs> eight or I accidentally right clicked on an arrow that actually works pretty well. But um, eight, 15 doesn't look too bad either. So we can do uh, use that for our intermediate point type and the value there. All right, so let's see, what should we do next? Um, let's do the rivets. So what I did for the rivets is I took my spline and duplicated it out here um, and then positioned it just kind of on the outside here, something like that. Now I could scale this down, but that can sometimes give us some weird results. Uh, things maybe not always line up in the middle. In this case, kind of the, the point is a little bit off from the corner there. Um, actually overall, it doesn't look too bad, but it gets a little bit off here where it's not quite centered as much as it, it could be. Um, and so what I'll do is actually use a different tool called create outline. Um, so once I'm in point mode, I will just right click and choose create outline. And this is great for creating like an inner or outer part of a shape. Um, but in this case, I can use it to make another segment that is, you know, in the middle of our extrude in that bevel. Okay, because it does a much better job of, of adjusting the size and keeping everything um, proportional. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now what I want to do is actually get rid of the outside one. So I will select one point, come up here to my select options and choose select connected. And I will select all the points that it's connected to. And I can delete those. All right, so we have our um, spline there that we will use here in a second we'll create the rivet itself which is nothing fancy it's just a sphere and it's actually a hem um, hemisphere so i'm going to choose that option here rotate it 90 degrees so that it's kind of facing the way we want okay still way too big so scale it down even more which because of the mode we're in is really just adjusting the radius here um so with that, we can put this in a closer, cloner. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option one more time as I create the cloner to make sure the sphere goes inside of it. I'm gonna switch the mode here to Object and drag in our spline. Okay, we can see them there. They're kind of facing the wrong direction. We can fix that in our Transform tab by working with one of our rotation values here. So pitch it is, I'll set that to 90. I guess it would help if I actually typed in 90 and not 80. Oh, okay, looks like it's 180, my mistake. Oh, well, and there we go. And as I mentioned previously, you know, we have a lot of flexibility here. I can still change the size of these rivets. I can change the amount of these rivets, uh, amount of rivets we have by coming into the object tab and adjusting the count here. If I want more, if I want less. And, you know, one of the reasons why I really, really wanted to get that spline so its corner would line up here is so that we could get these rivets on the corner or just about there, um, you know, if we wanted to. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, let's call this extrude shield so that we know exactly what we have. All right, great. Uh, next up, what we're gonna do is bevel this. So what I'm gonna do is take my shield extrude. I'm gonna right click on it and choose group objects. Okay, um, that way when I put the bevel inside here, uh, it's only going to work on the shield and, and not our cloner. Okay, and you may be going, well, wait a second, don't you have to make the deformer a child of something in order for it to work on an object? And the answer to that is no. It can also work if it's a peer, meaning if they have the same parent. So these 
the bevel and the shield extrude here uh, are on the same level, right? They're peers, they have the same parent, and the bevel would work on anything we put inside this null. So if I just created a random cube, and so that's actually a pretty big cube, um, drop it inside this null, it too is going to get beveled. beveled. So that means I can use a single deformer and apply it to multiple objects. Now what's nice about our bevel, okay, is we can use it in a couple of different ways. You can use it on different selections and you can add more selections. You can also have it bevel just based on the angle. So if we want more bevels or less bevels, we can just adjust this angle. Um, we're actually gonna use selections here so I can uncheck use angle. And the selections we're gonna use are in our extrude in the selection section, and they are our edge selections. And we'll just turn all of these on. You could also just type in these names here, but since I don't use them as frequently, um, I am not as familiar with them as I am say the polygon selections. And back in our bevel, we can then just come through here, take our, I believe that's like the beginning shell selection, put it in there, and we can see it's um, beveling that selection. I'm gonna set the offset amount to maybe something like 0.4 and turn up the subdivisions to three. That'll make it a little bit easier to see. But yeah, that looks good, right? So this next one should be the other side. Oops, let's make sure we just hit add bevel. I think I'm gonna want a total of four of those. So I added some extra selections, right? There's our second bevel. All right, I don't think we want these next ones because they're the inside here. I believe they deal with the caps, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, the start cap and end cap, but we want um, the steps instead. So I'll get rid of that and drag in just our last two. Okay, so that should be that edge right there. And then this one's gonna be that same edge, but on the other side. All right, now, while we don't have as much control, since this is an extrude, we can't select edges, so, you know, it could be hard to try and get just that edge um, beveled if we really wanted it. Uh, we've done a pretty good job here, okay? And I bet if we really, really tried um, working with our angle, we could, um, you know, bevel that edge as well, right? Maybe not, okay? I thought I had it beveled in the original shield, but who knows? It actually doesn't look like it. I know what I was thinking of, the fong. Shading. So that's something, the fong shading, that doesn't look like it's giving me as much of an issue here. Actually, I take it back, it is. And so that's something we may want to think about as well. Uh, because as we adjust this fong angle, you know, notice how we now have that very hard edge um, on our shield. And that's definitely something um, I think we want. So it's strange, it had, it had to use two different angles here, but I suppose since this isn't perfectly symmetrical, it could just be ever so slightly different. That just gives this a little bit of a nicer hard edge, which I do think we want. And you could always turn it back up if you didn't want that. So that's what we have so far with this. Um, everything's looking pretty good. Really, I think the last thing we need to do is bend this. Now, in order to bend this, I took our shield, okay? I took our spline and I grouped them together. What I didn't group in here, okay, was the cloner, was our rivets because we don't really want to bend them we just want to bend the spline that they're on. So that's why they are separate. Um, but we can then come in here, create our bend deformer and make it a child of our null. It is on the same level as our shield and as our spline. And so it will work with that. Now, the one downside to working with a deformer this way when it's a peer versus a child of something is that you really can't hit fit the parent because its parent is a null, it has no size. What we can do though in this case to help speed this up is make the bend a child of our spline, okay? And then hit fit to parent. So it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna help get us there a little bit quicker, okay? So once I've hit fit to parent, I'll then take it out. So it's no longer a child of that spline and then continue to, to size this. So I'll use the X to size this, maybe even go to a top view here. All right, do something like that. It doesn't need to be exact. In fact, a little bit larger here isn't the, the end of the world. Let's see, maybe a little bit larger height-wise as well. Maybe we go to a right view or a front view, depending on how you've made this. So that looks good. And can we adjust our other size as well? We can. So, all right, that's looking good. Now, honestly, what I should have done is tested out the strength of this to make sure it was bending the right way, because as we can see, it is not. Notice how 
the cloner seems to be working pretty good. And if it stops working, um, I found just turning the cloner on and off can help. Um, and it, look, we may need to make some changes here. It, it is a bit strange to me that they're, they're not on there like they should be, but we'll see if that ends up being a problem when it's all said and done. But this isn't the way I would, um, I bent this originally. See, this is what I'm talking about. Even when I go to zero, it freaks out. So rewinding, turning the cloner on and off, turning the spline on and off, um, just to get it to refresh. Okay. Um, let's see. So we want to rotate this differently in order to get it to work. And I sh like I said, I should have done that before I actually sized it because now I've wasted a little bit of time. And I think what I want to do is rotate it this way and then this way in order to it have it bend the way we want. There we go. And so now I can zero out the strength and size this one more time. So I think, yep, the X stayed the same. So it's just the Y and Z in this particular case I need to adjust. Not too bad then. And yeah, there we go. Looking pretty good. Um, I will add some strength to this though, maybe like 30 degrees. Okay. You may notice that it's kind of bending from one side. What I'm actually going to do is move the bend over to one side like this and just place it at the origin or where the beginning of it stops right there. You may be going, well, that doesn't look look right. There's a couple of reasons for that. First though, to fix the bend, we want to switch it here from limited to unlimited. Okay. And that will actually kind of continue this bend and have it match. Now it really doesn't look like it's matching or at least not as well as it could because we still have some issues with this we need to solve. And that is, if we look at our lines here, we don't have any polygons on the front or really the back parts of this. So that's why they're kind of breaking. They're not bending like everything else. So what we need to do is go back to our extrude, go back to the caps section here. And we want to go towards the bottom because we want the caps type here. We don't want it to be an N-gon. We want it to be um, either Delaney uh, or regular grid. Um, honestly, Delaney was kind of giving me a little bit of a better result if I twirl this down. Um, it was giving me the ability to make these polygons more similar size. So something like this. And just to kind of confirm the way it looks, we can turn off our shading and notice how much smoother our result is. Okay. Our spline is still freaking out. So I'll turn that on and off and you can see that I thought it fixed it. Yeah. For the most part it did. I think we still have some that are a little bit off. Um, that could just be another little rotation issue. Um, in the transform section that we need to um, adjust. Maybe something like that, okay? Although I'm not sure that fixed it for all of them. Wow, got lucky. All right, um, back to the uh, caps though. So I believe it's called Delaney. I'm calling it Delaney if nothing else. Uh, that seems to work pretty good, but honestly, the regular grid can work uh, good as well. I'm going to turn on quad dominant here. That's one of the advantages of using this regular grid. And really in a perfect world, um, you know, we'd get the lines here to match up pretty evenly. I don't think we're going to be able to do that. It's also a bit strange. It's at an angle, but even something like this, um, you know, is pretty close. And if I turn off my lines here, we can see, yeah, that still looks pretty good. It's still pretty smooth. And that is it there is our shield and as i said at the beginning you know the idea here was to make this a very flexible um model that we could change we could have it bend more we could change the bevel on like i did at the beginning or work with the number of rivets as well if i want more if i want less so that is how you model a basic shield so that will do it for this video if there's anything else you want to see it, please let me know in the comments down below. If you can do me a favor, like this video and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.